Good evening to all. Myself, Dr. Naresh Kulkarni, feel privileged to welcome you all on ECVE program. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome Dr. Pramod Kumar sir, who is today's eminent speaker in our Olympic ECVE platform and e-learning platform for field veterinary. Also, I would like to welcome all fellow veterinarians, academicians, UGPG students. Your presence makes us happy. Now, I would like to hand over this session to Dr. Santosh Shinde sir for further proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Narish. A warm and graceful evening to one and all. It is my honor and privilege to welcome today's eminent speaker, Honorable Dr. Pramod Kumar sir. As you, for the information of all the participants and the, for the information of the speaker, uh, Olympic ECV is under continuous motivation, guidance, and support from Mr. P. Karunanidhi, sir. Now, regarding this today's speaker, brief introduction. Dr. Pramos Kumar, sir, is a young, energetic, distinguished clinician. He is not only distinguished clinician, he is excellent researcher worker from last 10 years. He got experience of handling more than more than 10,000 cases of cattle buffalo, including artificial insemination, pregnancy diagnosis, repeat breeding, pyometra, metritis, and anisters. He also got uh, experience of handling more than 1,000 cases of obstetric cases for cattle and buffalo. Regarding such academic contribution, he has completed BBSC, MUSC, and PhD from COAS, Bikaner. India. Regarding the professional journey, Pramod Kumar sir started his professional career as a teaching associate in Razuas in Feb 2011. Further, he joined veterinary officer, government of Rajasthan in December 2012. His interest in teaching and research and extension work forced him to join Rajuas in um, for the Kuwas Bikaner as an assistant professor for Department of Veterinary Gynecology and Obstetrics. Presently, Sir is working as Senior Assistant Professor, Department of Veterinary Gynecology and Obstetrics, College of Veterinary and Animal Sciences, Bikaner Rajwas, Bikaner Rajasthan, India. Regarding Sir's uh, awards and recognition, he is recipient of several prestigious awards, and some of them are recently, Sir is awarded by Honorable Vice Chancellor of Rajwas on the occasion of Independent Day 2021 for publishing research article in this international journal, which is having NAS rating more than seven. He got best paper uh, research paper presentation award in 2019 PISAR conference. He's awarded by Honorable Vice Chancellor on Independent Day 2012 by Razuas for outstanding contribution in emergency clinical services. I'm privileged to, uh, it is my privilege to announce that Sir is the second position holder of Alembic MCEP Accept M Scientist Award, who used to give for the student who come meritorious from all the veterinary colleges. Sir is a recipient of uh, that award. He's also, he is also recipient of Certificate of Scholarship Award in 2011. He secured third position in university merit in BVC and EH in COAS, Bikaner. College of Veterinary Animal Sciences, Bikaner, securing say, a first position in All India Drawing Competition, 2011, and received merit certificate for first position in an annual drawing painting competition in 2010, and his College of Veterinary Animal Sciences, Bikaner. Regarding such publication, as already told, he is an excellent researcher worker and extension worker. He has published near about a 12 research article, 15 review article, and 35 clinical case report. For the regarding books and chapter, sir is a co-author for two, that is wet scan and any scan, which we used to use during this competitive exam. Then uh, Evidex, that is unique veterinary drug index for field veterinarian as well as budding veterinarian and fundamental animal reproduction, a basic animal reproduction book for field veterinarian, which is published in the local language that is Hindi. 
these are the books which is sir has uh, public author as well as co-author all these books are available on online that is uh, online platform you can buy the same from amazon and flipkart now i don't want it to be in between you and our today's eminent speaker now i request honorable dr pramod kumar sir to start the webinar good evening to all uh, i special thank my to hall alembic team for giving me this opportunity to interact with you people and exchange the knowledge sir i am audible yes sir you are audible sir okay thank you sir so we start today lecture on my personal experience on topic on efficient ways to combat the bovine anistress at field level anistress that indicates the late of stress expression at the unexpected time uh, why we term using expected time because in heifer or generally in multivarious animals and in a certain time after this if animal is doesn't show stress exercise then animal owner bothers Anistress, it is a functional uh, disorder of reproductive cycle in cattle and buffalo, which is characterized by absence of over sign of estrus. It is more severe in suburban and the rural areas of countries. And it is a multifactorial problem, which affects the livestock enterprises to a great extent. Why we say it is a multi-causative factor? Because uh, there is a no single panacea. There is, it may be due to the inadequate nutrition, maybe environmental stress, maybe you try and pathology or maybe some improper managemental practices. So anistress is a great, uh, <clears throat> is a large disease condition we say that affect the livestock owner. If we talk about their economic impact, then anistress leads to economic losses through increased intercarving interval, poor net crop crops, there is production loss, increase in treatment expenses and the cost of replacing mature animal with the first coming heifer. So uh, anistress causes a great economic loss to the dairy owners. If we discuss about the, their incidence, it's depend upon, although it depends upon species, breed, parity, season, level of nutritional, managemental conditions or the geographical conditions, if we discuss about in Indian conditions in India, its incidence is high. In indigenous cattle, it is reported from 2 to 67 percent, while in crossbred cattle, it is recorded up to 2 to 40 percent. A slight bit higher incidence is recorded in buffalo, as uh, some researchers reported that it is in buffalo 9.09 to 82.5 percent. And their higher incidence of anistress is buffalo because of lesser number of preenteral and enteral follicles, smaller size of preolatory follicle, and the greater tendency of the follicles uh, to address. Her. So, incidence are vary according to the region or the some geographical conditions, but still it is a great problem in Indian conditions. If you discuss about the predisposing factors the factors which are already present in the uh, in, in situation that increases the condition. It includes appropriate feeding after calving. That is a crucial period at the pre-partum and post-partum condition. If there is an improper feeding, then it definitely leads to the anistress of other condition. Poor body condition at the calving, that is the body score of animal. Some suckling effect, some managemental factor that include the housing and some managemental uh, factors that include the improper or the poor heat detection. So we discuss one by one what is the predisposing factor that's uh, when they present they leading to the anistress conditions. First, first and most important that is the nutritional status of the animal. And inadequate nutrition, either it is under nutrition or high feed intake, that is causes the anistress in Indian conditions. This is the most important factor. 
if we discuss about the undernutrition then negative allergy balance and the def deficiency of certain minerals like that calcium phosphorus copper cobalt zinc and manganese it causes the if there is deficiency de deficient in the feed then fodder then it is causes the anestress conditions in certain circumstances high feed intake it's also causes anestress because this causes high metabolism and the clearance of ovarian steroid that contains estrogen and progesterone from the body by enhancing the hepatic perfusion this that leads to the anovulation condition and delayed luteal regression so the nutritional status of animal is very important then we discuss about the body conditions body condition scores and if we discuss about the body skin uh, condition score then the restricted feed intake during the late gestation as we discussed earlier late gestation and early postpartum periods that is results in the low body score condition consequently lead to prolonged postpartum anestress if we discuss about uh, uh, the body condition scale 1 to 2 5 then 3.5 is the optimal conditions uh, to animal at the prepartum or the postpartum condition which give the optimum results and animal uh, may hit in after Two months or we say we say the six weeks so body score condition is very important if you discuss about the environmental stress although dairy cattle are not the seasonable breeders but extreme environmental stress like the extreme cold or the heat that affects the development of the follicle and the manifestation of the stress so extreme cold or heat that's disturbed the stress uh, in cattle also if we discuss on the buffalo, then buffalo have a poor thermoregulation mechanism and the thermal stresses definitely reduce the follicular activity in the buffalo. Then we discuss about the uh, early lactation or the suckling effect. So in high yielding animals, lactation causes, if they are high yielder, then their lactation stress causes longer postpartum stress period. If we talk to about the suckling effect, then suckling stimulate the prolactin, cortisol, and the oxytocin secretion. They causes the negative effect upon GnRH LS axis that suppress the GnRH secretion and increases the endogenous opioid peptides and beta endorphin. That causes the decrease of LH pulse frequency, which delay in the resumption of the postpartum cyclicity. So there, uh, where the <laughs> dairy conditions where the weaning is earlier then postpartum anistress is definitely decreases the conditions then we discuss about the parasitic infestation heavy parasitic mism is the one of the stressful condition that causes the anemia on weight loss and ultimately animal go to anistress conditions this parasitic infestation more common in the growing or the heavy we can say that then in a heifer animal then as compared with the adult cattle or adult animals. So parasitic infestation is the one of the cause that leads to the anistress condition, especially in the heifer. If we discuss about the genotype or the genetic material of animal, the resumption of the postpartum cyclicity depend upon the species as well as the breed. If we discuss about the postpartum anestress in buffalo, that is longer, while in cattle it is shorter. In suckling dairy cows, it is have a longer postpartum interval than uh, as compared to the suckled beef cows. So dairy cows have a longer postpartum anestress interval. If we discuss about the parity, then longer postpartum anestress period seen in the primiparous animal than as compared to the pluriparous buffaloes. So Genotype is also affect the occurrence of the uh, anistress conditions. Then we discuss about the periparturian disease where it is very important because abnormal calving, either setup of the metritis, mastitis and ketosis, they all the influence the onset of the postpartum cyclicity in the cattle and buffalo. Again, postpartum uterine infection, they suppress the GnRH release and LH secretion. So if animal is disease with the certain periparturian disease then definitely post uh, there is a <clears throat> delay in the stress then we discuss about the classification of the anestress where 
scientists, very scientists, they describe, uh, they classify the anisters into different uh, styles. As we follow and Kumar and associates, anisters may be classified in the physiological anisters or the pathological anisters. Uh, in physiological anisters, it may be ovulatory or non ovulatory. Ovulatory conditions are occurring in the gestational anisters, while an ovulatory anisters are in, observed in the pre, maybe in the prepubertal, lactational anisters, and the postpartum anisters. Pathological condition of anisters include congenital or hereditary cause of anisters, and these congenital disorders they include ovarian aplasia, ovarian hyperplasia, or the free Martin conditions. While acquired. And it, starts, it is also uh, uh, classifying uh, ovulatory and, and ovulatory <coughs> conditions. We discuss in one by one if the, and all these first include physiological anesthesia. In these conditions, animals remain in estrus during certain physiological status, which does not related to infertility. not heating during pregnancy animals comes not hidden during early lactation or the lactation animal come not hidden stress and early postpartum period so these are certain physiological conditions where the animal comes not in heat this is included in the physiological stress second we discuss about the uh, prepubertal anisters the follicular valves in the pubertal animal are similar to that of the adult, but follicular uh, grows in response to the uh, FSS secretion only up to the stage where they have a thicker antenna and thicker and, and then regress because of the low LH frequency. So as we discussed in the diagram, there is a if it, LH frequency is so in the pubertal phase. So animal is coming off. <laughs> in the heat, or we can say in the uh, showing the anister cycle, this is the this is called prepubertal anisters. If we discuss the gestational anisters, because of increased level of the progesterone during the pregnancy, they exert the negative feedback on the GnRH secretion from the hypothalamus that reduces the LH pulse frequency into the anisters. But in some animals, gestational anisters make occurs in some cattle and buffalo during early pregnancy. So, and it is occurs on some extent that animal may pregnant and comes in heat. It is terms at the gestational estrus. Then we discuss about the postpartum anisters. And after following the parturition, there is a short period where the animal not respond to the GnRH or LS axis. And this is called as postpartum anisters. Usually, that is longer in buffalo as compared to the cattle because there is low LS secretion during early postpartum in the buffalo. In the dairy cattle, ovulatory Easter cycle are observed at day 40, 15 to the 45 days after postpartum. Then we discuss about the lactational anisters. Because of high lactation or uh, high lactating yielding animal, higher level of protein in prolactin is uh, found in the high yielding animal, and this causes suppress of the GnRH secretion. And this GnRH secretion decreases the production of the gonadotrophin from the pituitary, and thus that leads to the anisters conditions. Then we discuss certain path ovarian agenesis, dysgenesis, or the Rearrangement of the uh, follicular luteal dynamics that causes the anisters. First, discuss ovarian as anisters or aplasia. That means ovary are not formed. It is a very rare conditions when one or both ovary are absent due to the <laughs> genital is does not form correctly. And if we go for the rectal examination or the rectal genital palpation, then we find only the genitalia and ovary are very small or the uh, very little formation, so these conditions are rare in animal, and this diagnostic method is the rectal palpation. Again, this is the ovarian hypoplasia condition. It may be unilateral or the bilateral. And in this condition, there is a lack of the promodia follicles, results either partial, that is the partial hypoplasia. If it is complete, then it is called the complete hypoplasia. 
although there is incidence is very low but reported in indian conditions in indian cattle it is 0.08 to 4% while in the buffalo is very less it is less than 1% in indian conditions that is ovarian dysgenesis there is a congenital disorder that is the free martin when <coughs> heifer it is born with the uh, female which is the uh, with the male conditions then if they are co-twins one is female and one is male then female is 90 percent they are sterile because in this chimeric conditions male hormone they are started uh, first from the female then they suppress the development of the female either it is a genital organ or there's some uh, this causes the partial expression of the testicular determining factor or the Mullerian inhibitory factor from the male that uh, prevents the Mullerian duct formation. This type of the free martin animals, they have a musculine steer like appearance, small vulva and long vulva hair. The diagnosis may be uh, best uh, examination by other tests tube method or maybe the genital palpation or the karyotypic examination of the blood. So as a diagram, we show the hair tuft and there is small <coughs> vulva at the scene in the diagrams. That is the free martin. So you always aware about these conditions because these conditions may uh, affect the animal economy is uh, animal owner economy because animal uh, owners weight where his hair is mature and uh, it is uh, core when it is uh, come in heat or the uh, having the gestation or the parturate and ultimately it's economic loss to the owner then we go for the next slide Uh, some technical issue when one minute. If we discuss about the unovulatory anistress, so at Kumar and Associates, they classified the unovulatory anistress in uh, four groups type first, type second, and type third, and type four. If we discuss about the uh, follicular wave uh, information, that's at the follicular wave, follicle first come from the emergence, then the deviation occur, and some growth hormones uh, FSH, they causes the follicular stimulating hormone causes the growth then the graphial follicles they are mature then ovulate and ultimately after ovulation cl formation occurs but in different type of the anistress in type first there is no deviation occur but in uh, type 2 anistress either there is a deviation but growth phase followed by the atresia in type third of anistress there is Either growth phase occurs, but no ovulations and large follicle is present that is upon in, uh, include in follicular and luteal cyst. In type fourth conditions where ovulation occurs, but CL is persist and that is called PCL. It is included in type four and ovulatory stress. So we discuss one by one anistress due to persistent carpus luteum. In this type of anistress, the follicular growth proceeds throughout the developmental stage and undergo ovulation and the CL formation, which subsequently turns into anistress because of failure of luteal regression. That is due to the inhibitory effect of the progesterone secreted by the carpus luteum on the hypothalamus hypophysial axis for the secretion of the gonadotrophins. So if animal is persist with the PCA or the CL, then it's come not in heat and it is called anistress due to the PCL. Then next term is the sub-stress or the silent stress or the quiet convulsion. Follicular development and ovulation occurs normally in animal without the manifestation of the overt sign of stress and it is generally found in very in many of the dairy conditions that's animal comes in the heat at the low sign of uh, stress or the slight sign of the stress and animal owner come 
that the animal is, is come not hit, hit then we are examine then the uh, ovulatory uh, ovary and the certain genitalia that they have no any genital abnormality and regular cyclings uh, observed it is common during the post pubertal period in heifer and early postpartum that is include 30 to 120 days in high yielding dairy cows so it is a quite major problem in indian condition that is the sub stress or the silent stress the probable cause of the silent stress is the suboptimal secretion of the estradiol by the mature follicle or the higher threshold of the estrogen in central nervous system to display the sign of the stress the other cause of the sub stress are maybe the head stress maybe the nutritional deficiency maybe the overweight maybe the foot lesion or the aging or the ericodism but most common causes considered for the sub stress that is the failure to detect the stress that is managemental error then we discuss an stress due to failure of observe the stress the stress distinction is the critical aspect of the dairy herd management when the ai is being practiced the condition may be due to the lower concentration of estrogen insulin or the insulin like growth factor that is insulin like growth factor first mediated efficiency of the uh, follicular growth or the increased metabolism or the clearance of the estrogen with the high metabolic growth then we discuss about the diagnosis of anestrus there is a crucial phase started either diagnosis and the treatment of the anestrus because this first slide they are all are theoretical but there is a practical aspect start is what is the how it is diagnosed by the anestrus and how it treat so first is discuss about the diagnosis of anestrus first is the history of the animal it is very important that either animal in the free range conditions or the stall feeding and the date of the post parture animal of the parturitions so always history important then we go for the per rectal examination or we say, say the genital examination of the genital rectal examination of the genitalia this causes the pregnancy must be ruled out by the careful examination of the ovary and the genitalia then we go for the ultrasonography of the genitalia and some ovarian pathology better visualized by using the transrectal ultrasonography examination and progesterone estimation also uh, has a indication when we do the progesterone estimation between 10 uh, between the interval of the 10 and 12 days if it is below the 1 nanogram per ml then it's a indication of the fair indication there is no ovarian activity if there uh, uh, limit is uh, across the 1 nanogram then it is maybe showing the either pcl of case or the showing the silent stress of case so diagnosis of an stress either by the rectal examination or the ultrasonic examinations in the field conditions then we discuss about treatment of the anestrus before starting the treatment we always say that it is mandatory to exclude the pregnancy first it is very important because in indian condition yeah, where the free range conditions animal are crossed by the another uh, bull or the vision three conditions we always go for the pregnancy diagnosis first before treatment the animal in order to ensure the effective treatment the health and the nutritional animal of animal must be in good conditions we always emphasize in the health and nutrition status of the animal before treatment is start so we discuss one steps how the animal health condition or the nutritional status be improved so first is the we use the deworming we use the dewormer in every 4 months it is better to use broad spectrum and dewormer to the uh, animals and in the recent concept we use combinations of the two dewormer that is the best giving the best result either say for example fenbendazole with the avermectin although we use the broad spectrum but 
it is better to use the combinations in uh, to ensure the best results then we discuss how we improve the nutrition of the animal it's include the supplementation of the several vitamins mineral and antioxidant in the feed and if we discuss about the supplementation of minerals how it is uh, given to the animal then we prescribe some mineral mixture to the animals in recent years various chelation technologies or the various uh, some techniques we developed for the uh, chelation techniques it's include ht hmtba chelation that is include for two hydroxy four methyl thiobenzoic acids which is excellent chelation techniques some mineral mixtures may supplemented with the omega fatty acid supplementation it include uh, omega 3 fatty acids chain that is a dha or epa that is eicosa uh, pentanic acids or the decosa hexanoic acids some mineral mixer having are the metal propionate some are methylated or some are the glycine chelated so they are if you are prescribe the mineral mixer to animal owner then always see how many minerals they are the chelated it your results are dependent on the how many minerals they are the chelated because after chelation the bioavailability is are increases and animals gets more minerals to uh, our body so always Uh, prescribe a good mineral mixture to the animal owner so that get, animals get their improved their nutrition in certain circumstances of the indian condition there when there is a deficiency of the phosphorus and certain vitamins which are important in the reproduction like vitamin a d3 and d e. so if we directly inseminate these injections to the animal then fast results may be observed in anestress condition suppose we when we phosphorus deficient area is there then we inject some injectable phosphorus say for example uh, we told the force or the tone force we inject the animal 10 ml i am into 3 or 4 5 alternate days uh, for the best result again the injection of vitamin a d3 and e we inject directly 10 ml for the uh, to animals to give the best results so it's my personal experience that we if we are inject this injection directly to the animal then fast results it may occurs then some traditional methods are also prevalent in the field to combat the bovine stress it's include either gentle ovarian massage and the painting of the lugol sidings and this ovarian massage or the painting of lugol sidings it is causes the local irritation that brings about the reflex stimulation at the pituitary glands for the secretion of the gonadotropin and subsequently cyclicity occurs and this cyclicity and sometimes in animal comes in heat or in the endometrium there is a formation of the prostaglandins that causes the luteolitis effect so sometimes some uterine motility stimulation may also resolve the anestress conditions then we use some non hormonal treatment in the fill conditions it's in cold certain herbal heart heat drug inducers and various pharmaceuticals companies they are make some heat inducer to the animals for combat of anestress either two capsule or the three capsule doses either for the two days or the three days in this a uh, capsule if we wait for the 10 days if heat comes not beyond the 10 days then repeated the uh, treatments tend to onward suppose we in, uh, give the animal at the treatment zero day to day then wait for the 10 days then again repeat 10th 11th or 12th days this uh, treatment then animals may supposed to be come in in the stress this include in the normal hormonal treatment or we say and the herbal heat drug inducer then we discuss about certain drugs to combat the anestress it's include the clomiphene citrate and it's given up to 1 to 1.5 mg per kg body weight for the 5 days orally if you are go for the mechanism of the clomiphene citrate then it is 
inhibit the negative feedback mechanism of the estrogen on the GnRH. Certain pharmaceutical company they forms the slomifin citrus as we seen in the pharmaceutical presentation there is a white color that uh, drug is the clomiphene citrate that is 300 milligram and to last size tablet of the clomiphene citrates it contains 750 milligram of the copper sulfate as we discuss to the veterinarians or the field vet that here is the copper sulfate it is used to close the reticulorominal grooves so that can drugs be bypassed bypass to direct the abomasum so copper sulfate is given to 10 minutes before in uh, to giving the clomiphene citrates although it is uh, prescribed that you dissolve this copper sulfate in one, uh, one or half liter water if animal are discomfort in dressing then you can may go for the oral administration with the butter and the good with the copper sulfate and giving the copper sulfate tablet 10 to 15 minutes later as my personal experience, these drugs, clomiphene citrate, their results are best in the heifer animals, especially in the buffalo conditions. Buffalo heifer are giving a good results. When we give the clomiphene citrate for continuous for the five days, then a <coughs> considerable results are obtained in field conditions. So it is a uh, good that clomiphene citrates are given after the copper sulfate admission for the continuous five days then we discuss about the hormonal treatment to treat the anistress conditions and when we go for the hormonal treatments then always should be attempted only when the nutritional and management condition are optimum we are always uh, to educate the veterinarians or the field bed then Firstly, go for the deworming, nutritional supplements, and herbal heat dress instrument. We never prescribe then they are first we go for the hormonal treatment because hormonal treatments results are the optimum when animals are having a good body score conditions. If animals are in the negative energy balance, there is either animal comes in heat, but where there is a chance of the abortion or pregnancy loss, so we always. Uh, attempt the hormonal treatment should be only when the nutritional and managemental conditions are optimum. Then we discuss one by one which type of hormone regime we are attempting. So first we discuss about the gonadotropin releasing hormone based treatment. GnRH allelog that is the busrelin acetate. As my personal experience, uh, its dosage is increases in the today's scenario. It is up to 22. 40 microgram and it's include uh, 5 to 10 milligram of busrelin. This causes induction of the estrus and concurrent ovulation with the variable response at oh, uh, measured by the various recessor and estrus comes from 4 to 20 days after the GnRH administration. Doses can be given by the IM or IV route and best results are obtained when the feeding and management condition are optimum. Several scientists may use the gonadotropin, that is the GnRH or busrelin in the various ester synchronization protocol, but only one injection of the busrelin may also be effective. Second is the gonadotropin based treatment. It includes Pregnant mare serial gonadotropin, or we can say the equine gorinian gonadotropin. It's possess FSH like activity and it is uh, causes uh, F, it, ECG are always used in the two anesthesis condition, but there is a negative effect also. When we go for the rectal examination, there is no any ovary. Uh, conditions either CL or uh, ovarian hypoplasial conditions then we go for the uh, ECG exam uh, hormonal intervention but care should be taken because equine gorionine gorotropin may causes the superovulation conditions so always uh, we prescribe that we <coughs> discard the first uh, estrus speed and go for the insemination in the next hit so uh, we are same 
सुपरवलेशन में न हटाकर एस सी जी इज ऑल्सो यूज इन द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द एनेस्टस विद फेयर डिग्री ऑफ द सक्सेस विद वेरियस साइंटिस्ट शो दीज कंडीशन इस्ट्रोजन बेस्ट ट्रीटमेंट आल दो इन द करेंट सीनेरियो इस्ट्रोजन इज रेयरली यूज इट इज अप टू द साइन ऑफ हिट टू प्रोनाउंस साइन ऑफ हिट बट इन द पास्ट फ्यू इयर्स इट इज यूज मोर इस्ट्रोजन इट कोजेज इन प्रजेंस ऑफ द डोमिनेट फॉलिकल एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ द स्ट्रेस एंड ओवलेशन बिकॉज ऑफ पॉजिटिव फीडबैक और द पिटोट्री फॉर द एल सर्ज वाइल इन द absence of the follicular development it is causes the luteal uh, luteolysis in the recent year small dose of the estrogen either used in the heat sink or some other protocol because the animal showing the low, uh, <coughs> lower sign of the stress so uh, to pronounce or the, to identify the stress we use the small amount of stress to uh, easily identify the estrogen uh, stress sign then we discuss about the progesterone based treatments so progesterone hormones it's based on the principle that if we in, inject the progesterone into the animals then it mimics the luteal phase of the estrus cycle by exerting the ne negative feedback or over the hypothalamus and pituitary for the lh release and when we withdraw the progesterone hormone then the normal follicular phase cycle is stimulated so we inject the progesterone for certain periods then when we withdraw this progesterone then animals can even hit injection of the progesterone either injectable progesterone we use either intravaginal implant we use although their result are varied but due to the cost effective we use either of these methods because cost of the treatment is also important for the animal owner if we discuss about the pro injectable progesterone that is the hydro uh, hydroxy progesterone caproid its concentration are 250 mg per ml either we use 2 ml or the 3 ml these progesterone we add in the 10 ml of vitamin a or some vitamin a d3 is injection total volume either it is the 12 or 13 ml either we <coughs> apply the 1.5 ml or the 8 days either we apply the 2 ml for the 60 days 6 days then if we are stoppage of the injectable of the progesterone then animal comes in the heat although progesterone it is a oily preparation the results are varied but in the case of intravaginal implant results are good but it is the cost effective we directly inject the progesterone sponge into the vagina and when we withdraw this sponge then good results are occurs in the case of cidr or the pred implant but it is the cost effective then certain prostaglandin based treatment and prostaglandin that is cause used in the persistent corpus luteum and substrus we use natural or synthetic analog the prostaglandin in a single dose and it's only effective between the set 6 to 16 days of the cycle or in, we can say that is in the presence of the active corpus luteum progesterone act, uh, prostaglandin at best if we discuss about the dose of the natural uh, prostaglandins as in the dinoprost are available in the indian conditions and some synthetic Uh, prostaglandin that is the cloprostinol we use uh, 250 to 500 microgram im for the intramuscular if we are go for the ivsm intravalvosum mucosal route then lower dose may require some insulin based treatment insulin as the dose rate of 0.25 international unit per kg body weight subcut for 3 to 5 days either alone or some combination give a good results as some scientists or the researchers show that gnrh or the ecg pre treated with the insulin having a promising result in the cattle and buffalo some anti prolactin based treatment some anti prolactin drug there as bromocriptin and the melatonin and they are given 
in the buffalo, especially the, in the summer and stress. And they induces the stress and ovulation occurs with the variable results as the research show. Then we discuss about the prevention of the anestos conditions. The preventive measures, as we discuss about the most important preventive measure that is the optimal status of the nutrition of the animal. This nutritional status may be optimum when animals are feeding with the optimum concentration of the vitamin, mineral or some antioxidant in the feed. Second point, the weaning, early weaning uh, comes the cases of uh, anestrus because weaning causes suckling or the lactation stress that is uh, comes in the early heat. Second method, third method is the biostimulation. In the some dairy where is male is kept in the herd of the female that is also uh, leads to reduce the anestrus conditions in some herd, especially in the heifer animal. Then the, there is efficient detection of the uh, estrus. Uh, it's by the managemental practices. Again, there is a routine pregnancy diagnosis that is also causes the prevention methods. Prevention of certain postpartum uterine infection and the periparturian disease. Again, there is a hygienic conditions at the time of the parturition. It's most important because these hygienic conditions, if are, we are not attending, then the animal go for the uterine infections. If there is a negative energy balance, then go animal go for the periparturian diseases like the ketosis and other diseases. And these delay in the stress. So it is important that the preventive measures of the postpartum uterine infection is always applied. And again, the regular deworming at the four months interval also helps that the, there is a prevention in the dairy herd. So as I conclude all this discussion that unstress that is a multi-causative factor associate problem affecting the livestock and enterprises to a great extract. And the diagnosis of the conditions need to be prompt at the earliest to prevent this, its occurrence for the effective treatment. If you are early died for the earliest, then there is cost effective also. It needs to be focused on improving the animal health and the fertility by prompting the good management rather than by replying on the widespread use of the exogenous hormone because this also affects the cost of the treatment. So exogenous hormones, we are not always based on, treatment is based on the exogenous hormone. As we discussed earlier, as such, there is no single panacea to correct it. Further research is needed, especially at the cellular and the molecular level for the better understanding of its etiology, its diagnosis and then therapeutics. So it's about today, uh, lecture. It's any question or query, then you please ask me about what are the practical aspect or what is the today about the, any confuse of the today lecture, then you please ask me. Thank you very much. Uh, there are certain questions that have been posted by the participants uh, that Please. I have uh, made in a presentation mode. So I will share the questions. Uh, sir, could you please stop sharing, sir, so that I can share the questions on the screen? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. There, there is a, one option, sir, stop a, a, sharing. Anyway, sir, if, if uh, yeah, I can read setting. also. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. I, now I'll share. Stop share. Yes, sir. Okay, sir.
my slide will be shown i'll i'll read i'll read also sir okay okay sir you read okay sir so uh, the question has been asked by uh, dr lalit jangir any rapid test available in market for uh, pregnancy diagnosis uh, in cattle um, there is a rapid or test maybe, uh, it is not in... uh, sir are we uh, discuss one by one uh, uh, we read the question and also are giving the answers there is no rapid okay. test only the progesterone estimation test are available in the indian conditions but their efficiency are not accurate they are 80 to 5 or the 90% they are correct because due to the presence of pcl animals are not pregnant or not come in heat but uh, uh, there is a the level of progesterone is higher so 100% reliable tests are not in available in india or the whole world then next question is how to differentiate between the cl follicle and cyst by the rectal palpation so, if we go for the rectal examination then the follicle they are the soft fluid fluid structure while the cl is the hard and it is uh, uh, above the surface uh, of the ovary and the cyst conditions it is uh, larger than the normal size of the ovary and if you go for the cystic examination then you go for the rectal examination for uh, repeated examination at the 5 day after 7 day after if the ovary conditions is large size uh, maintain that size of the follicular or the cysts, then we go for the shape for the cystic conditions so if you are differentiate easily by the follicle is the soft fluid structure cl is hard structure and cyst is by the large size and cyst for cystic conditions require the repeated examination of the genitalia then the doca symptom in the buffalo but not showing the estrus what to do if animals come in the sign of the showing the doca or in local language it says the doki and this sign are uh, occurs from the 4 to 5 or 3 to 5 days before the estrus if animal showing the sign of the doki then we inject the busrelin injection or uh, 5 to 10 ml and go for the ai if repeated ai occurs uh, if you possible then go for the repeated ai then dr anand pal saying the some herbal suggestion for the estrus that is the some plants also try like the kadi pata or the some uh, herbal uh, heat drug inducers are available by the some pharmaceutical companies to treat the anestrus but uh, they are not showing the exact their combinations because they are patent the products on such products then dr vijender showing the sometimes in the cattle and buffalo after intrauterine treatment of the metritis animal uh, go to anestrus in this what should be the line of treatment if you are go for the treatment of anestrus of the intrauterine sometimes pcl may persist that is the corpus luteum is persistent then we go for the injection of the prostaglandin and and i'm always suggested if you are the case of the metritis then go for the gentle palpation of the genitalia because if you are in palpation this certain metritis condition if you are go, Uh, not the gentle palpation then these pus goes into fallopian tube and animal are always be in a, in a stress and if salpingitis may occur then animal is not treatable so in these conditions where the pyometra where the metritis condition with the heavy or the uh, infection that is the septic metritis then gentle oval oval palpation for the gentle Uh, palpation of the genitalia and go for the prostaglandin injection if prosta one shot of the prostaglandin injection is, is results are not obtained then you go for the second shot of the prostaglandin that a second of the 9 to 11 days after first of treatment sir please um, yes, sir. more uh, questions 
sir these are the questions that have been noted during the session however yeah. sir one or two questions have been also sent in the q and a box one of the question is role of hcg in true and ester by sir, dr sir, sanjay uh, kumar mishra okay 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 in the true and ester there is a no follicular activities seen then we include in the true and ester and ovary are uh, the follicle are so small that are not uh, palpated by the rectal exam uh, palp examination then we go for the ecg examination uh, uh, injectable then when we uh, insert the equine gorner rotary troponin uh, 10 m uh, suppose uh, 1500 to 3000 international unit but it causes super ovulation because each of small uh, follicles they are mature and there is a chance of the super ovulation then this condition first uh, he, uh, first stress they are excluded and when animals come in the regular cycle in the next time then we advise to go for the insemination so this is the role of fss or submission we can say ecg in the true and stress any more question sir okay sir one more uh, last question is there sir uh, the role of uh, uh, one question has been asked uh, some cows showing metastatic bleeding and uh, they become repeater okay okay sir although uh, hum um, there is a, if animal in the post uh, post stress or maybe can the mest stress bleeding then repeat bleeding problem is occur and in this situation to obtain better result we go for the optimum nutrition by the giving a good mineral mixture and insert gnrh or ssd at the time of insemination is the best result two things thank you we do either good administration of the good mineral mixture along with the gnrh or scg admission at the time of insemination okay sir thank you sir now the messages are coming like uh, excellent lecture and excellent session like that the messages are falling so uh, thank you sir thank you very much uh, for your nice and uh, excellent knowledgeable session now on behalf of uh, alembic pharmaceutical sir i would like to express the vote of thanks for your nice presentation uh, thank you sir with very very good evening to one and all what a knowledge enriching session it was on behalf of lmb pharmaceutical limited myself dr amit singh would like to express my gratitude to dr pramod kumar for sharing his practical experience on diagnosis of uh, on the uh, anestes management for the you know, uh, livestock and definitely dr your excellent presentation will definitely uh, it will be beneficial for numerous field veterinarians and post graduate students across the country i would like to thank all the participants who have shown their keen interest in this webinar i would like to express my thanks to mr p kanandi sir senior vice president of alembic pharmaceutical limited for his consistent guidance motivation and encouragement to organize such useful webinar for the benefit of field veterinarians i would like to express my thanks to dr santosh shinde sir Mr. Rajesh Kumar Sharma sir, Dr. Sanjay Lakshkar sir, Dr. Naresh Tukarni sir, and all field veterinarians, all field uh, alembic employees who have show, who have not put their wholehearted effort to make the webinar successful. Thank you, thank you very much. Thanks to one and all. Thank you, sir. Thank you.